Hello and welcome everybody, it's Karen. Thanks for joining me. I have got for you a, basically it's a full-size pop-up card that kind of came to me in my sleep the other day and I thought, well, I'll put this into a video for you. <laughs> so here I am starting with my, my card base. This is 10 inches wide by five inches tall and I'm scoring it right at five inches and that will give me a five by five inch card base. Now this card will fit into a five by seven inch envelope, so that was why I chose that base. All of the cards today start with a 10 inch wide strip. Well, this is card, but it could be acetate, and you'll see that a little bit later. The height of this, that one and three quarter inch length of this 10 inch wide strip can vary. But for this first one, I'm making those rails, that fence that I had on that card, so I started with one and three quarter inches and I'm scoring it at half an inch, two and a half inches, seven and a half inches, and nine and a half inches. And then I'm rotating this and I'm going to score every quarter of an inch between the first and the last score lines. So all the way down along the quarter inch mark. So there I'm just doing it between the first and the last score lines. If you go over, it's not a big deal. Those are going to be the tabs that will get folded under anyway. But this was really to uh, let me mark off every quarter of an inch. And these are actually going to be cut lines. So if you would choose to do it just with your, your ruler, you could do that. I just personally find it easier to score it like this. And then I have it all definitely marked at a quarter of an inch. So now I'm just using my craft knife and my ruler and I'm cutting along all those lines from the first score line to the last score line. Don't go past those first and last score lines. So it should look like this. And then what you want to do is cut every other one. So I left the first one, which will be the first rail of the fence, cut the second, skipped one, cut the next and so on. So there you can see, so that leaves the rail at the top and the bottom, which I liked. And then I did exactly the same thing at the other end. And so then you should be left with something that looks like this. And I'm putting some double-sided adhesive tape now on the end tabs, on both ends. And then you can fold them all. Now they're all mountain folds, so I'm folding under on all of these. And with those corners, those um, sections there, just be a little careful. They sort of wiggle apart, but, but they are scored, so it, they will bend all together in the same place. Now, I felt like that was just a little bit too flimsy for the card, so what I did is I've cut some corner posts. So to do that, I started with just a five inch wide strip of you know, scrap the cardstock and it's a half an inch wide and I'm scoring it right down the middle at a quarter of an inch and folding that in half. And then I will just use this for the corner posts. So I'm putting a little bead of glue right where all the score lines are on that po on that fence. And then I'm attaching this post right over top. So I'm lining up the bottom there so it doesn't go past and sort of flattening it down over that. And then on this side, you want to just make sure that your score lines are all lined up and so that, so that the whole thing will bend in the, in the right spot. Now you can choose to trim this right off, flush with the top fence rail, or, or I chose to leave a bit of a post there. And again, I'm doing the same thing on the other side and then just making sure that they all line up, all those score lines line up. And that's the fence. Now on the card base, I'm using this house from the Snow Time 2 uh, stamp collection. And I'm just positioning my house. I wanted it as close to the top as I could get it and offset to the left. So all I'm doing now, you don't have to do a really good stamping of this. It can be any color of ink, it's gonna get covered. But I just wanted to know where the house was going to go and roughly where to cut the snow banks for the back. So roughly where that fence ended is where I started cutting. And then I'm just uh, cutting through both layers of my card base, just around this um, image. And that will give me a shaped card. So there you have it with the little elf's foot hanging out the chimney. 
So now with my fence, I have removed the release paper from that tab end and I'm butting it right up against the card base and then all I have to do is fold the tab down and over. Now I know that kind of uh, goes over that house, but I have this colored version that I'm going to stick on top of that so it will cover up that tab there. Now I've cut little snow drift layers. They are five and a half inches wide and I wasn't sure how tall to make these. So I've actually left way too much. That's two and a half inches, I think. But I, I didn't use that in the end. But I am scoring both of these a quarter of an inch in from each end, and that will give me a tab on either side. So here I'm sort of eyeballing how high I want the snowbank to go. I was trying to make it go a bit lower than the snowbank in the background. Uh, and so then once I figured that out, I just uh, put a pencil mark and then that where I cut it down. So now I'm folding both these ends in and burnishing the fold lines. And with some of these snowbank layers you'll get that extra little tab. I just cut that off so it doesn't show it bothers me but it probably doesn't bother everybody. So that's all I do. Now to attach these I took the first snowbank and I've lined it up along the bottom and roughly spaced it evenly apart from that house and I'm just putting a bit of glue on the rails of the fence and then all you have to do is fold the tab down and over and I just sort of held it in place for a minute or so until that glue set up. Fold that one over to the right and then evenly space this next one. So roughly, you know, half a distance to the corner post again. And same thing, just a little bit of glue on the fence rails and then fold the tab down and over. And then you're going to fold that one over and unfold the end flap. So both those end flaps are folded out flat again. And I'm lining up the bottoms and then you're going to fold this right over at that corner post. So you want to really make sure it goes flat there. So I'm just gently folding that up and over, pressing it down really well. And you want that left, that corner post on the left to be flat down. You don't want it coming up or it won't fold flat when it's all glued together. And now I have to sort of eyeball where those rails are going to be on my tab, on my, you know, little flaps that I put there which wasn't that hard. They're every quarter of an inch and there was a bit of a shadow actually, to be honest. So <laughs> it was easy. And honestly, if you missed, you'll just get some glue on your fingers and that's it. So I set that, let that set up under some acrylic blocks. And now for this tab, I'm removing that release paper. I'm going to fold it under and then you're just going to line up the corner there um, and the side edge. And if you can get that lined up, it'll, it should go properly. So I'm just squishing it in right up against the corner there and the side edge and then pressing it down and then with any folded card you have to bend these things back and forth back and forth until they really get a bit of a memory I think so you can see mine's a little bit crooked there so it needed a bit more um, pushing down <laughs> so I'm sort of really pressing on those fold lines and then it will go straight so now's the fun part where you get to uh, glue all the colored images on in place. So I'm just gluing the little house down. I did put fluffy stuff on this, so I was trying to be a little careful. And the tree I'm attaching to one of the snow banks. Now Rudolph, I didn't know if I should put him in front or behind the fence, but in the end I had decided to put these lights on, so I didn't want to put him in the front. So I just used my hot glue gun to attach these lights that are part of the accessories from Snow Time 2. And then here's the final card. So there are the lights and a bit of holly on the corners. Uh, I've added a sentiment and that's, I just love the dimension that these, these cards give you. They're just really fun. There's lots of room to write a message on the inside, but it's just a fun card. So I did a couple of other examples. Now this one is Candy Christmas from Craft Consortium. And I've used snow banks here. Instead of a fence, I just cut snow banks, but it was still 10 inches wide and by whatever height that ended up being. So the height doesn't matter as much, but the width will. Now on this one, I rounded the top, the, the edges at the back instead of shaping them. So if you have nothing that you want to shape at the back, of course you can do that. 
uh, those are chipboard images. So I've used a little piece of acetate to attach them actually. Now in this example, I've used the Ocean Tail Collection by Craft Consortium. And I've cut the bottom layers all from acetate. So the large one around was still 10 inches wide. I don't know the height of that, but I just used a, a wave die to cut the tops of it. And the two inside layers of acetate, I've used wave dies as well. Now you can see there, it's a little more flimsy, that acetate. Um, it doesn't hold its shape quite as well, but I love the dimension that that acetate gives you. And you can just see through to all the different layers. So I did uh, cut some of the seashells just to put around the aquatic plants. I cut the top with the wave die, the same wave dies I used at the bottom. Uh, so that, that whale is chipboard. That's my supply list on the back. Sorry, guys. <laughs> but I just thought that was really quite fun. There's lots of room to write a message on the inside. So there you have it. There's three examples of different ways of making these full-size uh, pop-up box cards. I hope you'll give these a try, everybody. Thanks for joining me and have a great day.